Hey there, my name is Bernie Woodland. I'm doing a series on real-time operating systems. I've written an RTOS, real-time operating system RTOS, called NUFR, part of the Raging Distribution at ragingdist.org. Follow the links to a Git repository. Download NUFR and run it. It's got everything, documentation. It's got a make system. It's got a reference project that will run in an ST micro discovery board. It's ported to a couple different CPUs. It's got all kinds of features. It's great for beginners. It's also good for advanced users. Now this first part in this series is embedded is an embedded systems overview. I'm going to go over terminology and general things about embedded systems and real-time systems to begin conversations later about what an RTOS is. But I'm going to start from scratch and I'm going to use my own acronyms. Uh, it's, these things are used in the industry. They're found in textbooks. I modify some of these definitions to my own needs, to, to, to what I think they should be. I've added some of my own stuff. So if you're picky, I can't help you. These are the terms I've chosen to use here. I'm choosing to use them consistently though. So bear with me if this isn't what you saw in a textbook or this isn't what you use at your company, etc., etc. A system can be a self-contained system where it has a number of things that go on inside of it. And this system has no inputs and outputs. Inside of it can have several blocks. I'm not concerned about systems which are which do not have the digital, and I'm going to use the word computers, and, and I'm going to violate certain terminology that I'm going to explain later, but bear with me as I just use the word computer in an incorrect way. So a system is that I'm concerned about has some sort of a digital computer. There's different ways of making computers. Uh, and I'm not going to cover that with analog computers, electromechanical devices, what have you. This system will have some sort of a computing complex. And, and that's the, the, the more exact term than computer. It'll have a computing complex, which is a, for now, a digital computer. Never mind the other type of systems, the things you learn in the thermodynamics, whatever. So the systems that we'll deal with can either have inputs and outputs going into the system, or the system can have all can have blocks inside of it and have the inputs and outputs going on in between subblocks in it, but not through the boundaries of the system. It all depends where you want to draw the the line uh, when you define what a system is. This could this diagram here, you could take this self-contained system in the previous slide, then just shrink the boundaries there and say that this sub-block inside of the self-contained system is a system in and of itself and has inputs and outputs. But the point is you're going to have some systems which are self-contained that don't have inputs and outputs through the boundaries and some which do. Now, a computing complex encompasses a lot of things. And that is another topic which I will only just touch upon here. You have to have a CPU memory, an I.O. That CPU can, you can get into a lot of different things. I won't get into what it can be, but that can be a DSP. It can be a microprocessor. It can be a system on a chip, but it will work with some memory, some RAM memory, random access memory. There doesn't have to use RAM, but I'm just going to call it RAM memory. And the memory can also be flash memory where you have a non-volatile type of memory. So you mix your volatiles and your non-volatiles, and then it'll have some sort of I.O. going into the computing complex, because what good is a computing complex if you can't access it, right? 
these optional components, which we are all familiar with, hard drives, any number of peripherals, on and on and on. These things are optional. You can have a computing complex which doesn't have these. Most of them do. But I'm going to use the term computing complex throughout this presentation because saying CPU is not enough, saying computer is not enough, whatever, whatever other term besides that, computing complex, I think, is intuitive just from what I put up here. Now, we need to discuss what an embedded processor is before going through all the other material. The, you have used embedded processors. You've used them on a daily basis. Might not have known that they're called embedded processors. An embedded processor will follow this diagram here. And in this system, and this again, this is the yellow box with the system, which in this case, the optional inputs, the A sub T and B sub T, you can have a system that, that's self-contained. But the, the, the computing complex has other little boxes inside of the system that it talks to. And the computing complex is thereby embedded in the system. The computing complex is part of, of, of a greater system like a car's braking system. The computing complex it is the CPU, the RAM, and whatever, which then interfaces to solenoids, relays, what have you. And those things electromechanically will cause your hydraulic fluid to apply pressure to your calibers, to your uh, drums, whatever. That whole, that whole thing is your greater system, the braking system. Computing complex is one part of it. The computing complex is embedded in the system. It is, it is one part. It can, the, the system does not consist of the computing complex, but is comprised of it. So the way you remember what an embedded computing system is, is the word embed. You take a computing complex and you embed it into a system, and that is an embedded computing system. Real-time system, again, something that you've used. You, you, you use real-time systems all the time. And you've probably heard the term real-time before. This has almost become like a slang word. You know, I need this done in real-time. And through the, through the usage of this term in, in slang, the, the definition has been lost to a lot of people that that don't work with computers and, and, and the like. So a real-time system is defined, and the definition is not, is not easy to nail down. Even with people that work on these things and uh, have written code and, and done testing and whatever for years, if you were to corner them and say, Define, define for me what a real-time system is. They'd probably have a difficult time doing this. I stumbled across this definition in a book once, <clears throat> and this is my best definition. So before I define what a real-time system is, first take a, an ordinary computing complex, whether it's embedded or not, and that computing complex, that system, the non-real-time system, it must work according to certain rules there uh, in, in a digital computer there are timing constraints between the CPU and RAM which run down into the nanosecond picosecond range very tight if you overrun some of the timing there then the system will will crash the the hardware isn't working correctly that does not make it a real-time system, even though there are timing constraints built down inside of the computing complex. Those things are contained in the computing complex, but that is not a real-time system. But my point is, is that 
any type of computing complex has lots of rules, say rules, it is a machine which there are contracts between the, the internal parts of the machine which are any of them are violated will cause a failure. So let's bring this over to a real-time system now. A real-time system first of all must do everything that a non-real-time system does. So the non-real-time system has timing between the CPU and RAM. The real-time system inside the computing complex also has timing constraints. Real-time systems can use computing complexes that a non-real-time system does. So the real-time system, at a minimum, has to do everything that the non-real-time system does. It has to follow all the rules. It has to execute code, etc., etc. What makes a real-time system different than a non-real-time system? It must comply with timing deadlines as part of the system. The system itself has timing deadlines either in the sub-blocks inside of the self-contained system or on the I.O. coming in and out of the non-self-contained system, one which has I.O. These things uh, must be done according to whoever specified the system. The, 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 the timing must be obeyed. Otherwise, you have a system failure if these timing constraints are not met. And this gets complicated because it is not a, it, it, the timing constraints are not necessarily a, a, uh, a hard wall. So to review, a real-time system is a system, and, and the real-time system that I'm talking about, because people have made real-time systems in the past which don't use computing complexes. And as I said at the beginning, I'm only concerned in all this in digital computing complexes, but but the, but a but a real time system does not have to use that, uh, and the real time system must operate the same as a non real time, and meet the deadlines. The examples that that that, that I've said before, and some of which I'll add here, are things that we've used in our day to day life. The uh, computing complex in a car's braking system is an, is, is an embedded real-time computing complex. The, as, I, as, as I talked through this before, the braking system uh, has a, is, is an embedded computing application. It is a, has an embedded computing complex, but it is, in addition to being embedded, it is also real-time. You're going down a hill you don't want your car's braking system to to delay processing. So uh, an, ex an example of a non-real-time system is a download of a file from the internet. A download from, of a file from the internet can be kind of uh, choppy. You can have the thing down, you know, the, 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 the file can come from some server and it can download a whole bunch in the first two seconds of a 10 second download and then just pause for five seconds and then get the rest in the last three seconds. That's okay in a in a non-real-time application like a file download. In the case of a braking system, you cannot have the brakes just not do anything for two seconds and then play catch up like in a file download. That violates the real-time constraints that braking system is 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 a a failure of a system if it does that. And the next example is a PC video game. PC video game you will use a PC. A PC is not usually not because sometimes a PC can be an embedded system if the PC is being used, let's say, at the dentist office to run some of their equipment. But normally a PC is not an embedded computing complex. The PC video game, however, is an application which uses that non-embedded 
computing complex to run a real-time application, the game. So the computing here can be embedded. The computing can be real-time. It can be one it can be one of either embedded or real time or it can be both embedded and real time it's it depends on this system so an atm machine is another example it's, it's it has an embedded computing complex but there's a part of it there's a tiny part of it the the keypad which is real time and I'll give another example similar to that later but generally speaking the ATM machine is not real-time, though it is embedded. There is hard real-time and soft real-time. And real-time, one of the reasons why real-time is difficult to define is because this, uh, the, the deadlines that you overrun can be hard deadlines and they can be soft deadlines. It all depends on the nature of the application. A hard real-time system usually has deadlines, timing deadlines, which are in the fractional second range, although that fractional second range can vary depending on the application. So, so the, the video game example, the fractional second deadlines are in the anywhere from, say, 100 milliseconds, 10 times a second, down to a hundred times a second, 10 milliseconds. But if you jump over to an application of uh, a servo controller for a motor controller, that thing can have hard time deadlines below 10 milliseconds, usually below 10 milliseconds, even below one microsecond, where a violation of that, of that computing, if, if you have a system designed where every one millisecond a motor control system say well let's just say it's 200 microseconds and you have to read where the position of the of the, of the motor rotor is and then the 200 microsecond time frame and then compute a new uh, drive for it at the end of that 200 microsecond frame that is hard real time because if you do not if you, if you set up your frames to operate every 200 microseconds and you don't finish your computation at the end of 200 microseconds, you are in a state of failure. In a motor control application like that, you would expect the system to shut itself down because, because it's not designed uh, to fail like that. It's got safeties in that to detect it, and there's, it, could, it could cause a loss of life, the damage, whatever. So the system has to shut itself down, maybe restart or whatever, because it's not working correctly. The soft real-time system that doesn't have to, if you have a violation of the timing, it doesn't have to set its to, to shut itself down. Yeah, that the timing violation can be a nuisance violation, but it's one where the system will continue to work. Uh, it continued to work in a way that well, wasn't intended to, but there's some allowance, and um, it's not the end of the world. And I use the example of the keypad at the grocery store or at any type of touchscreen keypad. You're punching numbers in, and the thing just seizes up for two or three seconds. And you might have, you know, Gonna type in a sequence one two three four. Went to put in the number five. The system seized up and you hit the number five, but it didn't take it. And you wait three seconds and you go on and you realize it didn't take the number five because it was seized up, or something like that. That's a soft real time uh, example. Annoying, but the system is not in. It's 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 not a catastrophic failure. Where it's not in a state where it, it has to be shut down like the motor controller. So this so this hard and soft real-time stuff is it's all a function of what the system is set up to do. 
it's like I said, there's no hard boundary. It you you can have some overlap between the hard and real soft real time, just as you have overlap between real time and non real time. Some more examples here of these uh, of hard real time, soft real time. Car's ignition system is hard real time. Ignition system is, of course, when you have to determine when the spark plugs actually fire based on how the uh, the position of the cylinder heads and, 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 and a number of other uh, calculations that your car's uh, embedded computing complex. And notice I didn't say the word computer, and most people would. <laughs> but the, the car's embedded computing complex must calculate when precisely that spark has to go out to the spark plug. If it's off by a large amount, you could get a bad knock in the engine. And that knock, if you get too many knocks, or if you get a severe enough knock, you could end up damaging the engine. Video game, as I've said, is hard real time. Now, a seismic recording system is partly hard real time and partly non real time. So, seismic recording system and could be, uh, and then let's just say it's the, you've got a mountain range in California that's prone to earthquakes, and every hundred meters, the, you put these sensors into the ground to measure the vibrations in the ground, and then every uh, ten milliseconds, I, I'm completely making these numbers up. They could be in the order of seconds for all I know, but let's just say every ten milliseconds you record. Uh, the the th vibrations in the ground, put that into an analog and digital converter, and th th that conversion gets stored, ultimately gets stored in a database somewhere. So you have to have a precise uh, measurement of the ground vibration every 10 milliseconds. But once the data is stored into a database, y you could have somebody at a office in uh, Los Angeles who is reading this data back that's been put in databases and that whole part of the seismic recording system where that the data is in the databases is not real time. The data is just buffered up and, and recorded in hard real time but the rest of the system does not have to run in real time. And again the grocery store self-checkout touchscreen is soft real-time. The rest of the machine is not real-time. So you can you have a soft real-time component like the touchscreen operate with something that the user, the user punching in numbers, the user expects when he or she comes around to being prompted to enter the type of payment or something that there will be a variable delay but the user will not expect there to be a, a, a delay when entering numbers. So you've got the soft real-time working with the rest of the system, which is non-real-time. And, and, and there are more examples of, of this, the fluidness of, this, of the real-timing aspects. Processor versus computer. We normally use the word computer, as I've said before, to mean everything that, uh, that, that, that I use the term computing complex for. The, the, you have a computer in your car. You actually have many computers in your car, but you ask the average person walking down the street, describe a car nowadays, does it, and, and they'll, if they have any knowledge of, auto, of an automobile, they'll say, and it has a little computer in it, and that computer runs the engine. Technically speaking, according to the definitions that, 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 that are in this presentation and what's in textbooks, what's in the industry, when you drill down to this definition, that computer in your car is not a computer. That computing complex is, is actually a processor and not a computer. A processor, by definition, will only run a single application. The computer by definition, 
is a processor which is designed to which will which which must run <laughs> multiple applications the this is why ENIAC is considered to be the first computer actually let, let me for the record say that recently ENIAC has lost their place in in the the annals of computer science history it is not considered the first computer anymore but I'm, I'm going to use ENIAC as an example of the first computer it was the first time that they were able to have a machine, a computing complex, which they could change out the application which it ran. <laughs> change out with difficulty, of course, but still change it out. The processor that, that can just run one application, and then there were probably processors before ENIAC, the processors did not qualify as being computers because they had the fixed application. So, the, so any processor before ENIAC was made, not it, 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 it didn't qualify as being a computer. So it's not enshrined in uh, the Smithsonian as such. A processor, since it only runs one application. <clears throat> The processor's fixed application we will call firmware. Firm meaning that it's not going to change. It's not intended to change. It's going to just run the one application. That firmware can can be in flash. It can be on a hard drive. It can be in any type of memory, but it's not like the software that a computer runs. Software is, is, is the application's which can be changed in and out that run on a computer. <laughs> processor running firmware <coughs> can be the same processor. I mean, I'm sorry, that the computing complex which runs firmware. The computing complex running firmware can be the same computing complex in, 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 in firmware and a, in a processor which is used in a computer running software. So there's no restrictions on what type of computing complex uh, can be put inside of a processor based system or a computer based system. The one can run firmware, the other can run software. They can actually both run on the same type of storage medium it's just that the intention of the software one is to change that. So embedded systems having computing complexes can be both computers and processors. Usually an embedded system is going to be a processor, but there are embedded systems which run computers instead of processors. Uh, this gets more complex and I won't get into it. But I'll let you stop and think about when you would use a computer in an embedded system. Real-time embedded computing complexes are both, can be both computers and processors again just like an embedded system and you're seeing a lot of overlap here usually though let's say usually the video game example violates the the usually for a, a real-time non-embedded system but usually for a real-time embedded computing complex again like the non-real-time embedded computing complex you're going to use a processor ATM machine. It has an embedded processor, not real time. ATM touchscreen, like the grocery store touchscreen, it is another soft real time example. Home alarm system has an embedded real time processor. You can make a home alarm system on a computer. You can use a you can use a, a PC, which is a computer for a home alarm system. It is embedded. P 
because the system's got sensors. It has a window opening detectors, motion sensors. It's in real time. Soft real time, you could argue. But the system is in real time. Usually it's, 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 it is a processor. It's a little standalone unit that you buy, which only runs the home alarm system. But like I said, it's an example of a computer. Uh, if, if you have your PC running the home alarm system, I'm sure you'd be better off with a processor because your computer can't always act as the alarm system if you're, if you're rebooting it or getting a Windows upgrade or something like that. But you get the picture. So this coming to the end of this long presentation about the differences, the subtle differences between embedded systems, non-embedded systems, is all this was done, the real-time systems, etc., etc. All this is done to give you a first understanding of what an RTOS is, real-time operating system. Without understanding all these concepts, which I said before, you cannot begin to understand what an RTOS is. What is an RTOS as a starting definition? An RTOS is an operating system designed for real-time systems. Real-time systems, of course, being with being ones which use computing complexes. RTOS is typically run in embedded systems, but they don't have to be embedded. It's not a constraint for an RTOS, but you usually find that RTOS is, as we use in the industry, usually imply a certain type of operating system. So this so when the RTOS has a couple of definitions, and these definitions aren't always the same. It depends on the context. When you talk about an RTOS, it depends on the context of the conversation which definition of an RTOS you're using. So the first definition here, an RTOS is an OS designed for a real-time system. You can design an RTOS, and they have designed RTOS as the, if you have a, an, an, an Aegis cruiser, a, a, a Navy ship has a real-time operating system, uh, which runs all of their 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 missile control their 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 fire control systems in real time but this last definition here I've got as, as an RTOS typically being something running on a smaller computing complex that RTOS that runs in the Aegis system is not an RTOS by the definition of one that runs on a smaller computing con complex because the fire control system of an Aegis, the Aegis RTOS is just a huge computing complex. So the other definition of an RTOS is one which runs real-time systems on a smaller computing complex, one that's cheaper one that fits into uh, a, a tiny little footprint uh, say it's something that runs under the ten dollar limit so if you go online and google the term RTOS and look for a list of them you'll probably find this bottom category for the most part and a few examples from from this this larger OS thing I'll continue talking about the specifics of what an RTOS are in another presentation. And come join me for that. Uh, there's a lot of things about RTOS I've been doing for years that I'm surprised that people don't know. There's not a lot of information out there. And I'll see you then.